Hi, folks. We now live in a time when common sense is a rarity. The voice of reason has eluded humankind. For these reasons, the following presentation will be quite difficult for many to understand or believe. However, in this world, nothing is ever achievable unless you are willing to give it your best effort. So here goes. If you were running the world during these trying times, and you knew that events were on the horizon which would forever alter the entire planetary civilization, would you want the global mainstream media telling everyone? If those earth-shattering events were as unstoppable as they were fateful, would you disseminate this information? If you told them what was coming, uh, what then would the 7 billion plus people who reside on planet Earth do the next day? That is, after you tell them that their world is about to come to an end, Will they still go to work? Will they continue to spend money? Will many of them even want to get out of bed again after they hear what is coming? Herein lies the challenge that is faced by the elite, those who control our way of life on this planet. Bear in mind that they know exactly what is around the corner. Their strategically located observatories and high-powered telescopes give them access to scientific data and astronomical phenomena which is so compelling that they feel they have no alternative but to distract us and deceive us and divert our attention. Remember, there is one thing more than anything else which they fear. That is uncontrolled chaos. They realize that real mayhem in the streets will not treat them well. Therefore, immediate social pandemonium is their greatest worry. Unpredictable political unrest strikes fear in each of them. Uncontrollable financial instability will only serve to inhibit their control over the masses. The time is ticking away when their control over each of us begins slipping away. Now, they may have their plans in order, but their ability to control our minds will have far less influence than what they were once accustomed to. Their deep underground bunkers may not be in the most protected areas that they once thought. Their experiments with time travel and interstellar travel, wormholes in parallel universes, blank slate technology and invisibility cloaking have already proved disastrous, as this video clip suggests. If images can move back and forth across time, maybe people and objects could time travel too. Paranormal investigators say time travel has already happened. They claim that a U.S. Navy destroyer was sent through time during World War II. In a secret experiment in the Philadelphia Navy Yard, so the story goes, a destroyer escort vessel like this one was made invisible. Its name, the USS Eldridge. The intention was to produce a radar cloaking device, but when the test began, there were very unexpected results. The date was October 1943. October 1943, uh, their final and most disastrous uh, test, they applied power to the ship. The ship disappeared, enveloped in a green fog. The fog then subsided and the ship itself was gone. Uh, the Navy ordered the power to be turned off. The, the power was cut to the ship. The ship didn't come back. Uh, moments later, it was spotted or reportedly seen in New Folk Harbor, hundreds of kilometers from Philadelphia, where it was moments before. The effect on the crew of the Eldridge was traumatic, 
as Navy officers were supposed to have found as they boarded the ship. Got to the ship, they found that the crew was visibly disoriented, some members were vomiting, and most bizarre yet, there's stories of men actually fused to the metal in the deck, still alive. The U.S. Navy denies the whole incident ever took place. The only witnesses to come forward have been figures of controversy. And investigators have an explanation for why the unfortunate crew were unable to talk. After the experiment, the men were quarantined for a number of months in a naval hospital where eventually they were discharged mentally unfit for duty. So in case the men were to talk about the experiment or any fantastic stories, the Navy could easily say, well, they're insane. We have the papers to prove it. But the big question these days that has the undivided attention of so many individuals is the notion or the belief that something lurks within our solar system. In my video entitled The Nibiru Planet X System and its impact on our solar system, we presented a short video clip which was published many years ago called Herculubus is Coming, which documented the professed statements of Carlos Munoz Ferrada regarding Nibiru, the planet of the crossing. He was a highly intuitive and gifted astronomer and seismologist whose findings cannot be ignored. Carlos Ferrada predicted with extraordinary accuracy numerous earthquakes in South America during the last century. He did this by making direct correlations between specific astronomical phenomena and various catastrophic earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. His most significant prediction regards the future arrival of a great comet planet. Now, for those who did not watch my recent video, I would highly recommend that you watch it when you have an opportunity. But Ferrata calls it a comet planet because it has the size of a planet, and it has also the speed and the elliptical orbit of a comet. Whether you believe or not what uh, this video portrays is not that important. What matters is that there have been numerous prognostications of this nature over millennia, which simply can no longer be ignored in the face of such pervasive and compelling evidence. So you will say, what kind of evidence? Okay, I'm going to show you. But before we go there, it's important to point out that Latin America has produced other gifted visionaries, just like Carlos Ferrata. Here are three of those individuals who have independently referred to the future happenings described by Carlos Ferrata. Mind you that their visions and scientific observations came to fruition long before the topic of Planet X or a binary star system became a conversation of great interest across the internet and the social media outlets. V.M. Uh, Robolu, who uh, was born in Tolima, Colombia, in 1998 he wrote Herculubus, or Red Planet, based on his direct and conscious experience. Robolu described the terrible events that will happen on our planet in the short term and explains the path that the human being can follow in order to achieve a deep transformation. Herculubus, a planet so-called by the sages of antiquity, is approaching our solar system and is the cause of great concern for those who know about such cosmic phenomena. In our former encounter, Herculubus put an end to the Atlantean civilization. These facts are duly related through the universal floods of different religions and cultures. The consequence of the very close proximity of Herculubus will be upheaval in all corners of our planet. Benjamin Solari uh, Paravacini was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He is considered the great Argentinian prophet, who was also nicknamed the South American Nostradamus. Decades ago, he wrote, 
the hour of hours will arrive, and in its darkness the crash of the big planet will be received. The earth will be reversed. Everything will fail. Samuel Weor was born as Victor Emmanuel Gomez Rodriguez in Bogota, Colombia. Samuel Weor, the great Gnostic master who gave numerous lectures in Mexico during the 70s, talked about Herculubus and explained that in the times of the end, it would approach the earth. Due to its great electromagnetic power, he said it would destabilize the Earth's crust, causing huge earthquakes, tidal waves, volcanic eruptions, and natural disasters. Herculubus would have approached our solar system in former occasions to unleash cataclysms that wiped out the Lemurian and the Atlantean civilizations. Now, he said, it would come again to end our civilization and allow a new era to begin. Have you ever considered why the Vatican owns and operates an observatory outside of Safford, Arizona? Not only does the Vatican operate the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope at Mount Graham International Observatory, which is located in southeast Arizona's Pinalino Mountains, they also share the same facility with the Large Binocular Telescope Observatory. The Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, also known as the VATT, is a 1.8 meter Gregorian telescope observing in the optical and the infrared. So why infrared? Because Planet X is often referred to as a brown dwarf, which has cooled down so much that it can only be detected in this range of light frequency. Construction of the MGIO began in 1989. It currently operates and maintains facilities for three scientific organizations. The first two uh, telescopes, the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, and the Heinrich Hertz Submillimeter Telescope began operations in 1993. The Large Binocular Telescope, one of the world's largest and most powerful telescopes, began operations using mirrors independently in 2004, with joint operations between the two mirrors beginning in 2008. Now this is according to Wikipedia the Mount Graham International Observatory uh, information site. So that brings us to the Vatican secret archives. Now, the archives has probably more volumes of original documents in the form of scriptural references, as well as historical records produced by the ancients, than any other library on earth. The Roman Catholic Church is further informed about the future of humanity from the numerous Marian apparitions which have occurred around the world over the past 200 years. It is well known in certain circles that many of the prophecies which were given to mostly children have never been released by the church hierarchy because of the dire content. Why might this be the case? Because those controllers of information know that such doses of reality are simply too much for the masses to bear. Of course, they have deliberately leaked this and that information over many decades so that those who have ears to hear will receive the messages. The Vatican is also well aware of the St. Malachi's prophecy regarding the last ten popes as well as those similar revelations given in various Marian apparitions. By these and other accounts, the current Pope, Francis, will be the final Roman pontiff in the tradition of the Catholic Church of Rome. One of those prognostications presents the actual context of when the current Pope 
would be forced to flee Rome in December when the great comet is seen in the daytime. One of the latest in the series of, of these Marian prophecies clearly indicates that huge changes are coming to planet Earth. Whenever uh, these predictions veer into Earth change territory, they always speak of massive, unprecedented, and cataclysmic events overtaking the entire planetary realm. No location is spared except those which are preordained as safe havens for the protected portion of humanity that is to be safeguarded. Recently I published a video that included a podcast concerning the fiery comet known as the Red Ball of Redemption, a comet that would bring great destruction upon the earth. This was known as the Bayside Prophecy. Even the uh, third secret of uh, Fatima is said to concern the end times, which is why it was never officially released by the Vatican. The primary agent of such massive global change is usually referred to as a shift, specifically an axis pole shift, where the Earth actually shifts on its axis by a number of degrees. An axis pole shift is the only planet-wide geophysical event which can generate so many predicted changes. The historical record, both geological and archaeological, is replete with hard evidence of periodic planetary catastrophes. Planet X, in fact, has experienced global landmass rearrangements at the closing of eras and the conclusion of epochs since the beginning of time. As we approach the current denouncement of the Age of Conflict, also known as the Iron Age, it is certain that Mother Earth will once again turn on her axis so that the old lands can be rejuvenated and refreshed, which is deemed a necessity, so that the new lands can emerge to sustain the new race of humanity is likewise an essential byproduct of axial pole shifts. Therefore, the real question is just what kind of celestial event would provide the requisite interplanetary dynamic to precipitate a shifting of the Earth on its axis. There can be only one possible scenario for such an event to occur, and that would have to be a celestial intruder of great order that would possess all of the right stuff to cause the Earth to literally roll over and stay there as the new normal. Hence, we see more of a logical explanation than ever afforded to the various schools of thought which promote a Planet X. As you can see here, the Planet of the Crossing has many different names given to it. All of these names have been provided as candidates for the heavenly body, which may be responsible for both past and future catastrophes here on Earth. That's not to say that there are not other diverse possibilities when considering the various apocalyptic scenarios which the planet has been proven to undergo. However, asteroids and large meteors, gamma bursts and supernovas, each have their obvious deficiencies when trying to explain an event like a pole shift. Of all of the theories which abound, and there are many on the internet, the narrative surrounding Herculubus seems to be the most plausible. It also appears to be the one which forms the basis for all the others. Even the Nibiru story and their Anunnaki travelers seem to have originated from the Herculubus version of earth-shaking events. It's true the sun has been going through some major changes over the past few decades. We wonder if it's a new location in the galaxy of the galactic center is 
enough to bring about such a profound and fundamental transformation. We also wonder if there are other galactic happenings, both seen and unseen, which may be triggering the sustaining of the sun's new behavior. As the sun ages, it is quite possible that it is simply entering a new phase of existence. However, there does exist an overwhelming body of evidence which points directly to the influence of a sizable planetary sphere within the outer reaches of our solar system. This would also explain many of the other recent and radical changes undergone by all of the other planets in our solar system recently. Especially one with an immense gravitational field uh, would be required for an axis shift to occur. Such a celestial body would also have to possess other extraordinary properties and unique features in order to effectuate a pole shift, as is often as is often foretold. The catastrophes described in ancient sources were traumatic experiences common to all mankind. Purged from conscious memory, these records are now interpreted as allegories, metaphors, and the trauma has been submerged in the unconscious. Collective amnesia. A revolutionary theory of the universe based on the records of the past has challenged the fundamental beliefs of modern science for more than two decades. Today, the unexpected findings of space explorations have confirmed many of the predictions of this theory. Mountains were born and mountains collapsed. Land and sea changed places. Great streams of lava flowed. The sea boiled and evaporated. Such were the scenes of unimaginable violence during the times of global catastrophe, as recorded by the ancients. Here in the New York Herald Tribune, uh, explosion in science, the artist's conception of what, uh, of what happened when the uh, uh, heavens burst. Um, what happened uh, during the 1500 B.C. Uh, upheaval, which uh, we read about in the Bible as the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, and the uh, phenomena or upheaval that uh, that accompanied that and this is the artist's conception of what happened in palestine and mexico and china uh, lightning meteorites being rained down as the comet's head came closer to the earth uh, followed by floods same in mexico where water swept over the entire uh, land great gigantic tides there were repeated changes in the earth's orbit in the lengths of day the seasons and the year In these catastrophes, entire species of animals were annihilated. Others proliferated from wholesale mutations. Mankind was decimated. Civilizations destroyed. So that now brings us to the question, what is causing the dramatic and meteoric changes throughout the solar system? The planets, all of them, have been experiencing unparalleled and dramatic transformation never seen or recorded before. I am going to show you some coherent examples of the changes now taking place within our solar system. The data has been compiled from various scientific institutions including NASA. This information has been publicly available for nearly a decade and includes actual statistics regarding these changes. This is data that is considered to be only the tip of the iceberg when referring to the continued changes occurring to the planets within the solar system. The planets are undergoing variations in their atmosphere. For example, the Martian atmosphere is getting sizably thicker and Earth's moon is growing an atmosphere. And according to Dr. Alexei Dimitri, there is a 6,000 kilometer deep layer of natrium that wasn't there previously. He says that we're having this kind of change in the upper levels of Earth's atmosphere where oxyhydrogen gas is forming that wasn't there before. It simply did not exist in the quantity that it does now. 
It's not related to global warming and it's not related to fluorocarbon emissions or any of that stuff. It's just showing up. Magnetic fields and brightness of the planets are also changing. The planets are experiencing sizable increases in their overall luminosity. Venus, for example, is showing us marked elevations in its overall brightness. Jupiter has such a high energetic charge now that there is actually a visible tube of ionizing radiation that has formed between it and its moon. You can actually see the luminous energy tube in photographs that have been taken recently. In addition, the magnetic field strength of each planet has also increased. Uranus and Neptune appear to have had recent pole shifts. When the Voyager 2 space probe flew past Uranus and Neptune, the apparent north and south magnetic poles were sizably offset from where the rotational pole was. In one case, it was 50 degrees off, and in the other case, the difference was around 40 degrees, both of which are pretty big changes. The overall changes could essentially be broken down into three categories energy field changes, luminosity changes, and atmospheric changes. Global climate change is increasing and intensifying rapidly everywhere. These headlines tell the story much better than I can. The worldwide weather patterns have gone into a crash and burn mode, both literally and figuratively. Every region of the world has now experienced a periodic and profound departure from their traditional weather norms since records have been kept. Global climate change does not accurately describe the planetary predicament. An ongoing worldwide atmospheric apocalypse does, manifesting as localized weather cataclysms, as these headlines would seem to indicate. So is it possible that the incoming comet planet has hyperdimensional qualities? Carlos Ferrada has stated that Herculubus travels at 300 kilometers per second for half of its orbit. He emphasizes that this is one one thousandth of the speed of light, as this video clip indicates. Entonces acá usted en su gráfico nos presenta lo que es la estrella muerta o el sol muerto. Eh, eh. En ese sol muerto él gira. Aquí a 92 kilómetros por segundo. Entonces, además de esos 92 kilómetros por segundo, él tiene otra velocidad, que es la más aterradora, ¿verdad? Que es la que se mueve muy rápido. Tiene tres velocidades, hombre. Lo máximo lo tiene en la mitad de la órbita. A 300 kilómetros por segundo. O sea, un milésimo de la velocidad de la luz. Eso es rápido. Uh. Therefore, we can only assume that this particular heavenly body is quite literally a heavenly body, one that obeys a set of laws that can neither be defined by quantum mechanics nor theory of relativity. For the uninitiated, the esoteric field of hyperdimensional physics is still emerging from its infancy. It does, however, provide a quasi-geophysical context in which a celestial body of extraordinary size, mass, and speed can behave as a comet planet. Hyperdimensional physics accommodates many other inexplicable aspects of the solar system and anomalies throughout the Milky Way galaxy, which have eluded sound scientific explanation for decades. Likewise, there are countless other galactic phenomena 
which the current astronomy and astrophysics paradigms do not sufficiently illuminate or support. In light of these and many other inconsistencies found throughout the tenuous teachings of the academic establishment, it must be noted that the conventional wisdom has been found wanting in this regard. The whole subject matter is simply too controversial for the establishment to take up in any factual or meaningful way, and so it shall remain until the end of days. The gifted visionary Samuel Weor, in what is referred to as the Aquarian message, stated the following, An unusual event is going to accelerate the process of swift change to the axis of the planet Earth. I am referring to the planet Herculobus. This planet is six times bigger than the planet Jupiter. The planet Herculobus belongs to the distant solar system of Tylo. The solar system of Tylo is rapidly approaching our solar system, and Herculobus is rapidly approaching Earth. Modern astronomers have before their sight the planet Herculobus, or as it is known by modern science, the Bernard Star. This planet is a powerful giant that will pass through an angle of our solar system. When this happens, the revolution of the axis of the planet Earth will accelerate violently. Then the final catastrophe will occur. Some scientists believe that they will be able to push this monstrous planet away with nuclear explosions, but this will be useless. It will be impossible to push this tremendous mass of a planet out of the way with mere nuclear bombs. This same planet brought Atlantis to an end. Before Atlantis existed, it annihilated the existence of another continent. We know very well that the continent of Mu or Lemuria sank within the waters of the boisterous Pacific Ocean after 10,000 years of earthquakes and incessant volcanic eruptions. So when will the final shift occur? There is only one answer to this question. Those who reside at the very peak of the pinnacle of the New World Order know the answer. They have all been there before. According to the Cosmic Convergence Research Group, when scientific knowledge and applied technology reach a critical level of advancement without being informed by spiritual truths and guided by moral authority, the current civilization will relinquish its right to continue as it is. It is really that simple. This statement also captures the essence of why the timing is so difficult for anyone to pin down. Because those who direct the most consequential and far-reaching scientific research experiments in the solar system know exactly what they are doing. Of course, the highest power controls all, so the actual moment of truth will come like a thief in the night, as it always does. Since Herculubus can behave as a hyperdimensional entity, it exists outside of the normally perceived parameters of our universe. It is, however, extremely impressionable and responsive. Were it to receive the frequencies which indicated that the misguided scientists have really crossed the line, it might just show up on our doorstep tomorrow. However, there are many ways in which to send the final message. Whether it shows up in the form of a huge red planet, also known as the planet of the crossing, remains to be seen. What is of greater interest to those of us who have watched this drama unfold is exactly where in our solar system the curtain will go up. During previous epochs, the show always began with the crossing place, or the place of transition, as the Akkadian name of Nibiru means. 
Whether the final shift will be triggered by the winged disc is really anyone's guess. However, because there is no doubt that the future of humankind lies in the balance, as does the fate of planet Earth, we are compelled to, to point out the following. The solar system and Milky Way galaxy have an elegant order and beauty. The outcomes of runaway applied science and unchecked applied technology do not always support this established order. In fact, there are numerous covert programs such as HARP and concealed NASA initiatives as described in Dark Mission which fly directly in the face of an orderly universe. There are other signs on Earth and omens in the heavens that something very big is around the corner. And that is the number of man-made catastrophes which are engineered wittingly or unwittingly. For example, each of the past six years have brought to the planet an extraordinary event of truly historic and monumental proportions, as shown in this slideshow sequence. What is important to understand about each of these events is that they are all ongoing. The people on the Gulf of Mexico coastline will verify this, as will the whole country of Japan. So will the residents of the Jersey Shore. Likewise, the entire United States is just waiting for the next debt default doomsday date, and the endless cycle continues. So what's the point? There is something much bigger going on in the background which compels the powerful elites to completely ignore the real solutions to these and many other urgently pressing matters. At the same time, whenever they do respond, they seem to do so in a manner that guarantees an exasperation of the problems which humanity faces. Another perfect example of this willful neglect and ineffective remediation is the uh, proliferation of space junk, especially junk which is powered with nuclear energy. Can you imagine that stuff is sent up into space which produces nuclear byproducts and or radioactive wastes? For instance, in 2005, at least 13 nuclear reactor fuel cores eight thermoelectric generators, and 32 nuclear reactors were known to be in Earth orbits below 1700 km. So where's it all going to go when those various satellites and probes and space weapons decide to come back to planet Earth? The final point is that much of that space junk is serving a vital purpose in the minds of the government elites. Tracking brown dwarfs, comets, planetoids, asteroids, large meteors, and comet planets is certainly now a huge priority for them. Apparently, the dangers posed by the freefall of any of this nuclear-powered junk must not compare to the benefits which they are accruing in the meantime from their global space watch program. Perhaps their completely cavalier attitude and reckless response to so many things is a reflection of what really does matter to them at this very late date. Who could deny that a Herculobus would fit the profile of such a grave and momentous concern. We can only conclude that the rapid and relentless weaponization of space, which has occurred since the Reagan years, may be less about controlling the territory below and more about eliminating threats from above. And that the Star Wars program also known as the Strategic Defense Initiative, was actually conceived in anticipation of a war in the heavens, or with unwelcomed celestial intruders.
With all of the aforementioned changes happening right in our own backyard, is it any wonder global climate change has taken the world by storm? As for the true cause of such pervasive, profound, and permanent changes, a Herculubus in our neighborhood appears to be a very realistic possibility. Quite frankly, it might be better if humankind assumed that it is as real as our highly esteemed astronomer Carlos Ferrada has described it. In this way, the community of nations would get down to the business of respecting our precious planet, not competing for its every resource. We are concerned that if a concerted effort is not made in earnest, with haste and in good faith, our future will be much less pleasant. Always the people of the world have the inherent power to positively affect all of the outcomes that I have referred to in this presentation. The more we resonate with reverence for our planet, the quicker the message can be delivered to our celestial neighbors that we have relented in our harmful behavior. If ever there was a time to unite around a single cause, this is it. Once we exceed the point of no return, what will come cannot be stopped, nor can the severity be alleviated once the key dominoes start to fall. It's now less than a minute to midnight. The government elites have proven time and again that it would rather take the path of least resistance. Doing nothing is certainly the best way to not alert the public about these eventualities. They also know that the die has been cast many decades ago, and that their predecessors chose to chart a course which would be more and more difficult to change with each passing day. However, there is no question that the collective will and predominant intention of the human race has great power. So what shall we do? Individually, we can remain centered, grounded, and focused on what is really important in each moment. If nothing else, each of us can go within to find our strength, our courage, and our resolve to make it through and out the other side happy, healthy, and whole. Truly going within during these challenging times and meditating on the Supreme Consciousness will guide us in our moments of greatest need.